Hello, it's time to learn one of the most important topics that we'll see in programming, and that is how to write a program with a loop. In other words, a program that causes some behavior to happen over and over again. And uh, this would probably be a good time to point out, I don't know how much this microphone can pick up, but uh, there is a looping behavior in the background right now, and that's my cat meowing his head off because he wants dinner, and my wife has him locked out of her room so that she can work without having to listen to him, and so we have to listen to the cat meowing in the background. The cat's name is Mr. Mustache, if you're curious, and although he's sometimes kind of sweet, right now he's kind of a jerk, because it's not dinner time. It won't be dinner time for another ten minutes. Maybe more. Ah! Stupid cat meowing. All right, anyway, if you can't hear that, good for you. What, uh, let's load up a little world here. There we go. So here we have our robot and the robot is trying to make it actually currently let's just focus on the robots trying to make it to the end of the hallway and make that last cell dark so make this cell dark and I'm going to show you how to do that and then we're going to take a look at how it works in Java what I do is I write a while loop and the syntax for while loop looks very similar to using an if right if if this were an if we might say if we have some some boolean expression of some sort then we have some statements in here, and then otherwise we have some more statements, and if there are no statements at all in the else, we can leave, leave the else out. And so the syntax for while loop is very sim similar. There is no else for a while loop, thankfully, um, because that wouldn't really make sense. So while some condition is true, perform some statements. When that condition is no longer true, stop performing those statements, and we'll take a closer look at that. So in this case, what I want to do is move and I want to move as long as I haven't yet reached the wall which is while the front is clear while the front of the robot is clear move and let's see while the front of the robot is clear yeah okay uh, oh I'm supposed to make that last cell dark so once the robot is at the wall meaning the front is no longer clear we'll leave the loop and then we will make dark Excuse me, I'm getting over a terrible cough too. So lots of lovely noises today. Ooh. Okay. Let's hit compile. That's F5, if you, since you can't see me doing that. And in my interactions pane, I'm gonna say what did I call that thing? Darken at wall. Okay. And that's in a file called lesson, hence I'm writing lesson dot. I'll prove that to you. Lesson. Oh, where was I here? Darken at wall. Darken hat wall. And go. Whoop. Well, that was probably a bit too fast. But I think you got the idea. It did succeed in walking to the wall and darkening, which is good. Having learned my lesson about that being too fast, <coughs> I'm going to set my delay for the next problem to be 100, which is means it's going to move 10 times a second instead of 20 times a second, and hopefully that will be more reasonable. Okay. So, maybe we'll watch that one more time, now that it's a little slower. Except now it wasn't even on the screen. Lovely. Trying one more time. Okay, it's so fast, it's, I can't seem to make the window appear before it happens. So, whatever. There's the robot, going to the end, and setting that cell to be dark. And here's the code to do that. Let's take a look exactly what that code is doing. So it says, while the front is clear, move, and then make dark. So what's going on is we have a test about whether the front is clear front is clear we'll just write this sort of shorthand and if that test is true we continue on to our statement and our statement just says move uh, but we could have a whole block of statements in here and upon finishing that block of statements Java will go back and perform that test again so we began with the test the first thing Java does is perform the test and if the test is true, the front is clear, the robot will move, and then it will test again. Is the front clear? And if it's true, it'll test again. Or Sorry, it'll move and then test again. And eventually that test will be false. And when it is false, in fact, let me write that this way. When it is false, the program will continue with the next line of code, Then, the, and the next line in our program was to make dark. 
So that's what happens. We test if the front is clear. If true, move. Test if the front is clear. If true, move. And eventually test if the front is clear and it will be false. And we exit the loop. <coughs> Excuse me. And make dark. All right. Uh, in general, in general, this didn't have to be a single instruction like move. This could be an entire block of statements. So maybe we have a whole ooh, yuck, block of statements here. And what that means is that all of those statements are going to execute. There we go. All those statements are going to execute in the entire block before Java proceeds to test if the front is clear again. So if this first statement makes the front clear and the next statement makes the front no longer clear, that doesn't matter because Java is going to complete all of these operations in that block before then testing if the front is clear to decide whether or not to enter that the body of the loop again and execute those statements again. Right? So this part inside the loop is called the body of the loop. And this is our test or our condition. All right. Now, the task that I actually we should probably state the general form of a while loop that might be helpful. So, in general, a while loop and I call it a while loop because there will be other kinds of loops in Java. <coughs> Man, that cough is driving me nuts now. All right, in, uh, in my while loop, I have some Boolean expression, just like I did for an if. And then I have the body of the loop in braces, body of loop, which is really just a bunch of statements. Statements, just like the, the uh, inside of an if, except that there's no else. Uh, and really, this is now our I think our fourth kind of statement, if we if we recap, right? Because we also know about, let's change colors for a moment, we also have if statements, and we have return statements, and we have just a method call statement, method call, right? Those are the ones where we say things like robot.move. So those are our four kinds of statements in the language so far. And it's going to seem for a while that we keep introducing statements, and then very quickly we're going to run out of statements to introduce, and we're going to start learning how to do some fancy things with them. But we're still at the point where we're introducing Java constructs, new kinds of statements. All right, so the task I want to solve now, let's go back to that picture. There it is. There's my hallway. Let's see. The task I want to solve now is <coughs> excuse me, make all of these cells dark from where the robot is all the way up to and including the last cell at the wall. So I described this here. Ensure that all the squares from the current square to the wall are dark. And for convenience, I've done the loading and setting the speed in here. In fact, I think I'll make the speed even slow. You know, let's not speed it up at all. There we go. But I did the loading in here, so I don't need to keep typing. Oh, you know what? I don't mind typing that. There we go. Make it nice and simple. Darken to the wall. How do we darken to the wall? Well, clearly we need a loop. While, and it's probably going to be a pretty similar loop, right? In fact, let's write out the rules for writing a loop. I think that will that will help us. So, huh. so how do you know you need an, a loop? You need a loop when you think to yourself, keep doing something or repeat something when these kind of words pop in your head that means you need a loop and uh, how do you actually write a loop well here's how I, how I write it first I figure out what happens over and over again so that that becomes the body of the loop the thing that repeats goes in the body of the loop and I should probably be more specific. The thing is really an action. The action that repeats goes in the body of the loop. So in this example from before, let's bring that up, the, we repeatedly moved, but we also repeatedly checked if the front was clear. But the check isn't part of the body of the loop. The thing we're repeatedly checking should be the loop condition itself. So. The action that repeats goes in the body of the loop. And I'm writing it in this order because this is the order I usually write my while loops in. First, I figure out what repeats. Then, I'm going to uh, figure out when to stop. In fact, I'm going to rephrase this. I like it better like this. 
what repeats? What action repeats? And that goes in the body of the loop. Next question is, when should the loop stop? And having determined that, when should the loop keep going? And this becomes the loop test, the loop condition, right? The condition is when it should keep going. But I find it's often easier to think about, when should the loop stop? My loop should stop when the robot's at the wall in the other example. Therefore, it should keep going when the robot's not at the wall, meaning the front is clear. Okay, in the next video, we'll start using this, this newfound power of while loops to solve some simple problems and, and progress until we have a feel for how to solve a wide variety of problems using while loops. And we're going to see while loops pretty much nonstop as we work uh, with programming. And if not while loops, then some other kind of loop, because very few interesting programs uh, don't involve, let's just put it this way, all interesting programs generally involve using loops. So we'll see the power of loops in the next video. I'll see you there.